Don't let anyone tell you that God says something, that the Most High said something. Oh, it's written that the, the Most High said this, and they can't point you to Scripture. A hearty welcome to the twelve tribes scattered abroad and to those grafted in. This is the Israelite in America. Um, so sorry I've been away for a little bit. You guys, there's a story going on with that. I mean, um, I've been uh, at home a lot currently with my son, and I have a very young son. So um, it's made recording uh, nigh impossible a lot of the time. So, but we're pushing through. I'm filming this this video for you guys at midnight, literally. So we we got some dedication. Anyway, enough about me. Fair warning. I think some of you are not going to like this video. All right, fair warning. I recently did a video, the last video, or the second to last video on my channel, uh, speaking about interracial marriage and specifically uh, uh, Go Black to Africa. I'm sure a lot of you guys know who that is. Go Black to Africa had made a video about interracial marriage, and I did a kind of reaction um, commentary on it, wherein I, I uh, you know, you can go watch it. Go watch it. But I shared some, sh I shared where I, where I saw where he was coming from, and then I also shared where I disagreed with um, what he, certain aspects of what he was saying. Uh, several aspects of what he was saying, actually. But for the for the full breakdown, just go watch that video. Uh, now, as as I expected, I had a lot of Israelites coming out um, against me and, and very, uh, my opinions in that video. And there were a lot of comments made that um, I'm going to just address, not individually, but in this, in this video, blanketly. So, this video is going to deal with interracial marriage as far as Israel is, cons is concerned, right? As far as the Israelites is co are concerned. And why... Look, not all of you, okay? I gotta say it, not all, because people will be saying, oh, you said all... No, not all of you, but there are there are a growing number of you, a surprising number of you, who need to get your act together where this is concerned. You Israelites, a growing number of you, need to get your act together. When people come up on my channel... Quoting, trying to tell me that scripture says something that it does not, that's where you lose me. All right, people, yeah, that's where you're no better than the, than the, the white people that come onto my channel, um, telling me that I'm, I'm, I'm bleeding people to hell or, or that I am, uh, preaching a doctrine of man. Okay. Uh, you guys are doing the, doing, and, and then they come on and bring scriptures to support their faulty claims and the scriptures don't say that. Some of you guys, some of you guys are doing the same thing. Don't tell me that the scripture says something that it does not say. Well, what do you mean, Israelite? What are you talking about? We're going to get into it. All right. So remember, the topic is interracial marriage. So first thing I want to mention, we're, we're going to go to the scripture. But the first thing I wanted to do is pull up this um, uh, this Wikipedia page. Yes, it is a Wikipedia page. It is based on uh, uh, census data. I believe this one is. I'll leave a link in the description below. You can go and look over it more in your own time. And if you want more stats, you can go look at that, uh, those on your own time. I'm not about to bring up a whole bunch of stats. I just want to make a point here. So this is a graph of interracial marriages in the USA. And because we were talking specifically about, um, you know, Israelite and, and Caucasian marriages, because that was what that my last video boiled, boiled down to on this topic. Here we go. We're going to look at, um, and, and more specifically, Go Black to Africa addressed a black man marrying a white woman. But we're going to kind of do both. But, um, we're going to kind of keep the focus right now on the black man with the white woman. So of interracial relationships, okay, in the U.S. as of 2010, this is 2010 census data. So this has fluctuated just a little bit, margin of error, right? Also along with those who didn't report. Point, uh, what is it? Because the percentages for race and wife. So that's the 0.8%. Well, as far as the wife is concerned, percentages for race and husband. So only 8.6% of all black men, married black men, in this country, 8.6% are married to white women. That is a minuscule number, okay? And yet we've got some people blowing their tops off, rolling in the in in the in their derision of said people, and turning away Israelites who have a heart for the kingdom and have a heart for our people, but who might have a half white wife or a half Latina wife. But let's we're going to focus on white at this moment, okay? Uh, to put this in perspective for some of you guys, let's, let's go down here a little bit. Uh, okay, 4.6%, right, of married black American women 
and 10%, 10.8% of married black American men had a non-black spouse, right? So this is the totality. That means um, 4.6% uh, of married black women and 10.8% of married black men, not just white spouses, where they're including Latina spouses, Asian spouses, whatever. 8.5% of married black men and 3.9% of married black women had a white spouse. 3.9% of married black women, 8.5% of married black men. Up there, it's at 8.6%. So, you know, ever, ever so slight difference. And this is what uh, a lot of Israelites are losing their minds over. And listen to me before you guys are, oh, you, you, you just, oh, you are, you're a sympathizer. You're a colonizer sympathizer. First off, I'm, I'm not going to listen to that. But second off, that is not what I'm, uh, 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 dealing with here at all. What I am bringing to, what I'm bringing into point of view is that the, the, this, it's not even a huge, as huge as a, of a, um, tidal wave as a lot of pan Africans, so-called pan Africans would have a lot of people think. Okay, there's all oh, the turning. If you hear some of the people online, oh, they all these black men are just going with white women. Oh, a bunch of I can't marry these these white these uh, uh uh black women are just going with white men. It is not anywhere near as as gargantuan a quote unquote problem. This not, not my word as you as some of you guys would have other of you guys believe. So, with that said, now I want to go to the scriptures because we got a script. We got to prove this out in scripture. Okay, because. When we talk about scripture, I had a bunch of Israelites or or Israelites and and slash or Pan Africans come up on here because side note, a Pan African and an Israelite not the same belief. I know you guys, some of you think so. It's, it's not the same. Not all skin folk are kin folk. Pan African does not necessarily align with Israelite and all that an Israelite is supposed to be in belief. But that's a, another discussion for another time. But these, some of these, some, some, some Israelites slash or Pan Africans came, would coming up on my channels telling me that, oh, it's in the Bible that the Most High said Israel is not supposed to marry outside of the nation. Israel, it's written in the Torah. Israel is not supposed to marry outside their nation. Okay, blanketly, you guys can go and look at some of those exchanges. I got some private messages, but you can go and look at the public exchanges. So we're gonna tackle that right now, right? We are going to Exodus. We're going to the Torah, right? I'm reading out of the King James Version. Uh, we're going to go to Exodus chapter 23. Let's go down to verse uh, 20, 23, actually. Okay, so this is the Most High taught, uh, giving instructions for Israel when they're going into the land, how to deal with the people of the land. All right, Exodus 23, 23. The Lord talking. For mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Pay attention to those names. And I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt what? Utterly overthrow them. Utterly. And quite break down their images. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's let's go down a little bit to uh, verse. Let's go, go to verse 29. All right. I will not drive them out from thee, in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beast of the field multiply against thee. <laughs> Interesting, this right here, video for another time. Check out my um, uh, biblical proof that the land was in Africa. <laughs> um, By little and little, I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea, even unto the Sea of the Philistines, and from the desert unto the river, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and ye shall drive them out before thee. Listen to this now. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. What is a covenant? Or, excuse me, what is a marriage? A marriage is a covenant, correct? When you enter into a marriage with someone, you are entering into a covenant with them. This is basic knowledge. You guys know this, okay? So all these people that he's talking about right here, right? The Most High says, "Don't marry, Am don't marry Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, right? Hivites, don't do not marry any of these people." Okay, let's move on now. We're, we're we are going somewhere here, and we're probably going to get there pretty quickly. Stay with me. Deuteronomy chapter seven, all right, starting at verse one. 
when the lord thy god shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it and hath cast out many nations before thee the hittites and the girgashites and the amorites and the canaanites and the perizzites and the hivites and the jebusites seven nations greater and mightier than thou and when the lord thy god shall deliver them before thee thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them there that is there it is again utterly destroy them thou shalt make no covenant with them there it is again nor show mercy unto them now listen listen neither shalt thou make marriages with them plain it doesn't get any clearer than that neither shalt thou make marriages with them thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son why for they will turn away thy son from following me that they may serve other gods so will the anger of the lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly okay and these those two scriptures that i just read will be what a lot of uh the israelites that i mentioned will come at you with or come at me with um when i talk about this topic problem is they are missing context and as i say often context is key context is key so he says do not marry these people right do not make marriages with these people they they're named right hittites girgashites amorites canaanites perizzites hivites jebusites right um they, it was named in the previous section that we we were just in right he, the nations are named nowhere in here nowhere in here does it does he say do not marry at all don't marry any any other nation other side other than israel he names specific nations specific nations that he says do not make na do not make covenant with these people that i'm sending you to to dispossess and cast out do not make covenants with these people do not make marriages with these people context is key okay now i can already hear some people rolling their eyes and saying no you're just making that up no that's not what it says it means all there were no other people okay let's go let's continue because this is <laughs> this is all in the bible and a lot of it's in torah a, a whole bunch of it is in torah actually let's let's move on to another place in torah to to show you where context a different context is applied we're still in deuteronomy let's go to deuteronomy chapter 25 right 25 verse 5 listen if brethren dwell together right talking about israelites and one of them die and have no child the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger what the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger does that seem pretty clear to you now we're getting into a different context a different bit of context her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her and for those of you that, are, that have a problem with this scripture okay i this is not one of my favorite scriptures either just just being transparent but it's in here all right and it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead that his name be not put out of israel okay why 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 would this be can anybody tell me why why this would be hmm you guys know because the child right the the woman not the child the woman takes on the name of the husband the husband is not counted under the woman's name the woman is counted under the husband's name so if this woman who was was an israelite married to an israelite right died without a, and her husband died without a, without a child and she went and married a, a an egyptian right then their children would be egyptian their children would be counted egyptians right because it goes by the father who do we know in it show of hands show of hands who do we know where the uh the the they count the bloodline and, and the genealogy and descent from, from the woman from the woman's side can we think of a people that do that i'll wait i'll wait okay so now here we have some different context right she this this here it says the woman of the dead shall not marry not marry without unto a stranger it says a stranger blanketly it doesn't say shall not marry out into a parasite a hivite a blah 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 no it names it explicitly hey she needs to marry this is who she needs to marry right and if she and then there's instructions for if he doesn't want to take her um you know then she she he she can spit in his face and all that 
but she's supposed to marry the next following kin, the next of kin. He won't take her. Then she goes to the next of kin. He won't take her. She just moves down the, the family um, relation line. Okay. All right. Different context. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Cause that's not all. That's not all you guys, <laughs> you guys, you guys are going to, um, the haters, the Israelites that come up in here that are trying to tell me scripture says something that it doesn't say they are going to find a way around these, um, they shouldn't. It's not good, but they are going to find a way around these. All right. We're going to Numbers now. Numbers has a lot of chapters in it. Numbers chapter 36. Okay. Dealing with the daughters of Zelophehad. You guys know the story, but let's bring some bring up context again. All right. Now, remember the daughters of Zelophehad, their father died and he only had girls. Right. So they're like, hey, we want inheritance. We don't want our inheritance to go away. Moses, do something. So they Moses goes to to the before the Most High and the Most High gives him an answer. Hey, this is what this is what we're gonna do. All right, verse uh, Numbers thirty six, verse six. This is the thing which the Lord doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad. Okay, all right, saying, let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesseth an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. So here we have context again. Once again, here now, this the 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 woman in the women in question are told, do not marry a stranger, right? Don't don't marry outside. But even more than that, do not marry uh, into a different tribe. Marry into the tribe that you are a part of, right? That your father was a part of, and that you are a part of, so that your inheritance doesn't go and be counted under the name of another man of a man a man from a different tribe because that is the line that you will be counted under if you you daughters of Zelophehad, had go and marry from um from your tribe into a different tribe then your name passes unto that tribe right you were counted under that tribe i'm about to show you something we're gonna keep going you naysayers i hope you naysayers are writing this stuff down and 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 getting some nice um scriptural rebuttals Okay, you don't do you better come good. Don't don't come with your your feelings and telling me that oh uh, uh, pan Africanism this and pan Africanism that and y'all uh, the, the most high says this when he doesn't say this. Okay? When he doesn't when he's not saying that. Um let's go down. Okay, verse 10. Even as the Lord commanded Moses, right? So did the daughters of Zelophehad. For Mala, Tirza, and Hogla, and Milcah, and Noah, who was a woman of course the daughters of Zelophehad were married unto their fathers brothers sons so at least second cousins but probably first cousins is what this sounds like says their fathers brothers sons and they were married into the families of the sons of Manasseh the son of Joseph and their inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father these are the commandments and the judgments which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses unto the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. Listen to me now. Now we get into something, uh, uh, again, more interesting. The tribe of Manasseh. Who's Manasseh again? Oh, yes, yes, Manasseh. The son of Joseph, right? The son of Joseph who married an Egyptian? That Joseph? That Joseph who did not marry an Israelite? but married an Egyptian? What? Matter of fact, let's go there. This is Genesis uh, chapter 41. We're going at ver starting at verse, verse 42 here. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Yeah! <laughs> and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Okay, yada yada. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zephnath Paneah, and he gave him to wife 
Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. So Joseph didn't marry an Israelite, right? Did Joseph marry an Israelite? No, Joseph did not marry an Israelite. Was Joseph breaking a, a commandment here? Was Joseph being, was, was Joseph going against the will of the Most High? That's what some people would have you believe. You see, this is, this is the, this is the, 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 the warped thinking that some of us get, get roped into. Okay. Again, some, not all, some, some of y'all. Um, let me, uh, and okay. Verse 50. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath, again, taking care, taking care to name this, this woman, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, right? For God has made me forget all my toil. And the second called he Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Okay, and we uh, that, I'm just, we don't need to go any further than that. Just count, just um, uh, bringing that up and and counting that, uh, bringing that to you guys' minds that Joseph did not marry an Israelite. But guess what? Joseph's sons, Joseph's. Uh, two sons, his children, the children that he had with this Egyptian, this Hamite, this person who was not of Israel, were counted among the tribes. Okay? They were Israelites just as much as the tribe of Judah, just as much as the tribe of Simeon, just as much as the tribe of Zebulon, Asher, whatever. But there are people, in the, oh my gosh, I don't need to keep, I don't, don't, don't need to keep being a dead horse. But it irks me. It irks me when people say, because there's a difference between opinion and scripture. If someone was to come up in my comments and say, hey, just my opinion, but, you know, I don't think Israelites should in, uh, uh, marry, intermarry with other nations, especially this nation or that nation, because of economic reason, because of historical reason, because of blah, blah. Okay, that's all well and good. We can have a, a, a discussion about that, and we might agree or disagree. We might agree on some things. We might disagree on other things uh, or not. But it takes on a totally different meaning when someone comes up in my comment section or sends me a message telling me, oh, this is in the Bible. God said, the Most High said, you better have receipts if you're going to, if you're telling me the Most High said something. And if he, if you don't, get out my face. I'm, that's it. Just get out my face. Now, on that note of, of, um, genealogies, right? And counting, counting, uh, counting people. Counting non-Israelites, uh, let's, let's go down, go down, 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 down. I think you guys can see this. Yeah, you get, you can see what I'm doing. Let's go to Matthew, right? The book of Matthew. Oh, oh see, we're in Torah. Now we're to the New Testament. This interracial marriage thing, and mind you, I'm really condensing this. I um, I could could have done a much more in depth and much longer study on this, but really, really, it it is it's not worth the all the time because. Those of you who are on the fence, this should bring you to at least study, look at your Bibles close, more closely and study um, this this topic out. And those people that are just against me, or not against me, I should say, that are against this, this um, that are against truth, right? Because it's, it's truth. It's not, it's not my point of view. It's not their point of view. It's truth. Those, of, those people that are against truth, that are trying to say, say that God said something that he didn't say, are still going to believe that regardless. But let's go on. Uh, we're in. We're, we've been in the Torah. All this was in the Torah so far, and we still got other scriptures. So don't worry. We're going to Matthew chapter one. Yeah, you know. Some of you know where I'm going already, right? The genealogy of this says Jesus Christ is King James, obviously Yeshua the Messiah. <clears throat> Excuse me. The book of the generation of Yeshua, uh, Yeshua Hamashiach, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brethren. All right. Now, Judah beget Perez and Zara of Tamar. Tamar was not an Israelite. She was not part of Jacob's camp, right? She was, she was from, uh, I believe it was Timnath, Timnah or Timnath, over there in the land of Canaan. She was, she, um, it doesn't say if she was uh, exactly a Canaanite or, uh, um, what person, what people she, exactly she was from. Uh, comment below if one of you guys have that information. I would like to see it. Um, but she was not an Israelite because when Judah told her to, in, in, in fact, let me just go, let me go. Cause people, people will say, well, you're making it up. I always like to bring receipts. I always like to show what I'm saying. Okay. 
Um, okay, right here, right? Own uh, the Judah's sons have just died, right? We're not going to go over the whole story. His sons have died, and Tamar is now uh, a widow. Um, okay, and the thing, uh, and the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew them also. Okay, verse 11, Genesis 38, verse 11. Then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter in law, remain a widow at thy father's house till Shelah, my son, be grown. For he said, lest peradventure he die also, as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. So she left. She was not part of their camp. She was not part of their people. She was part of another people. And she left and went to her father's house. How do we know this? If this wasn't enough? Okay. And in process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up unto his sheep shearers to Timnath. He and his friend. So yeah, I was right. Timnath. <clears throat> he and his friend Hira the Adulamite. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath to shear his sheep. Um, and she put her widow's garments off from her, and covered her with a veil, and wrapped herself, and sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timnath. For she saw that Shelah was grown, and she was not given unto him to wife. Okay, so this, this woman was not an Israelite. Not an Israelite. And yet, here her genealogy is, in the genealogy of Yeshua. Let's, let's keep going. All right. Uh, Judah, Judah begat Pharaoh and Zara of Tamar. All right. And he goes on. Uh, 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 uh. All right. And Salmon begat Boaz. This is Boaz. This, <laughs> let's call him booze here. Of Rahab. Wait a minute. Rahab? Rahab, that non-Israelite once again? That non-Israelite from Jericho? That Rahab? that said, your God will be my God? And got grafted in? Well, that Rehab? That Rehab? She was, she was Boaz's mother? Solomon begot Boaz of Rahab? Hmm. Wait, 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 wait. And Boaz begot Obed of Ruth? Ruth, who's Ruth again? That name is Ruth. Ruth. Oh, yes, Ruth, the Moabitess. That non-Israelite. That non Israelite. Do you see the picture as it begins to as as it expands before our faces? Do you see the picture that 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 is unfolded as we actually look at what the scripture says? Hmm? Do you see do you see what, what's going on? And of course, again, again, I already know that the people that are the naysayers, the people that are against this type of thing are gonna come and and still try to talk me down, but guess what? We're going back to Torah. Yeah, we're going. We spend a lot of time in Scripture. We're spending the most of most of our time is 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 being spent in Scripture on this presentation. We're going right back to Torah again, right? Because we don't need to read all of this. This is a long, all, long story short. You need to know all these people, right? Math, uh, Mathan we got Jacob, and Jacob we got Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Yeshua, who was called Christ. Okay, okay. All these people that are counted in Yeshua's uh, genealogy, right? So Yeshua, right, came through this line, right? These people are these pe these generations. Yeshua could have he could have chosen anyone. Could have chosen he didn't have to choose Mary, right? That would have been Joseph's husband. I mean, wow, well, <laughs> that would have been Joseph's wife, right? He didn't have to choose a woman that was going to be uh, 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 the wife of somebody who had all these non-Israelites in their bloodline? Don't you think the creator of the universe could have easily chosen somebody who had remained like, largely Israelite there for their generations, or even totally Israelite? Because you best believe there were plenty of Israelites that remained totally Israelite through their generations. You don't think the, the Savior could have chosen one a, a virgin from, from them? Come on. Come on. Yet all of these people are named in the genealogy of, of uh, the Messiah. Okay, now, like I said, back to the Torah. We're going to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 20. All right. Now, uh, verse, let's say verse 10. Deuteronomy 20, verse 10. Uh, when thou comest nigh unto a city to fight against it, then proclaim peace unto it. And it shall be, if it make thee answer of peace, and open unto thee, 
then it shall be that all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries unto thee and they shall serve thee and if it will make no peace with thee but will make war against thee then thou shalt besiege it and when the lord thy god hath delivered it into thine hands thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword but the women and the little ones and the cattle and all that is in the city even all the spoil thereof shalt thou take unto thyself and thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies which the lord thy god giveth thee wait what i thought you were i thought we weren't supposed to take any women i thought no no foreign women that's what that's what the torah is contradicting itself what oh oh wait 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 let, let's read a verse further down oh what thus shalt thou do unto all the cities which are very far off from thee which are not of the city cities of these nations what nations the Perizzites, the hittites the hivites that we just named what what you think i'm lying no let's read let's read another verse down well, let's keep going but of the cities of these people right but of the cities of these people which the lord thy god doth give thee for an inheritance thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth what cities oh my goodness but thou shalt utterly destroy them namely so let me tell you the names the hittites and the amorites the canaanites and the perizzites the hivites and the jebusites as the lord thy god hath commanded thee did he say the asianites <laughs> did he say the the caucasianites did he say the polynesianites did he say any of that or are we seeing again context people context or are we yet again seeing na the, the, the specific names of the people? Hey, do not marry these people. Do not make covenants with these people. Do not give your sons or uh, give your sons or daughters to be married to these people specifically. Hmm? This should shut down any any discussion of the matter right there. I shouldn't have to go any further. This scripture right here. Okay, he says, hey, the ones that are far off, sure. But the near ones that are you're told to destroy, no. This should shut down anyone trying to tell me, well, God said not to marry any um, anyone that, that isn't an Israelite. He just said no foreign marriages whatsoever. But we're going to keep going because there's more. There is more. The scripture will tell you. The scripture in interprets itself. If you look and actually read, the scripture will... will <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, uh, let's just keep going. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 10 here we go when thou goest forth to war against thine enemies and the lord thy god hath delivered them into thine hands and thou hast taken them captive and seest among the captives a beautiful woman mm -hmm, and hast a desire unto her that thou wouldest have her to to thy wife then thou shalt bring her home to thine house and she shall shave her head and pare her nails and she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her and shall remain in thine house and bewail her father and her mother a full month and after that thou shalt go in unto her and be her husband and she shall be thy wife god's contradicting himself the most high is contradicting himself right right that's what that's what that's what people that are saying he said not, not to marry any foreign people he said not to marry any one that isn't an israelite that's what you guys are saying right that yahweh is contradicting himself you're just totally ignoring the context that this would obviously be, based on what we just read, this would obviously be not of the nations that he said to destroy, not not of the Hittites, the Perizzites, right? The Hivites, the Yabuzi, a.k.a. Jebusites, right? <sighs> Guys, it is, it, is, uh, it is highly annoying when people, when people be telling me, um, God said, God said God this, says God something. says that, the that Bible the says, said actually something. says this. Oh, it's written that the, the right? Most High the says, says this, this and, it and they can't that. point you to scripture. Right? That was another thing I was doing. I was asking, that was another thing I was doing. I was asking all of these people that were saying, oh, the Most High said not to marry any foreign wives. I said, can you show me the scripture? Can you show me the scripture? Much like I do to the people that, that come up on here, the white people that come up on here, or the ish people that come up on here, and are like, y'all aren't, aren't Israel. You guys can't prove it. The Bible says this. The Bible says that that that, that uh, Yeshua had blonde hair and was white skin. The Bible says that Jacob and, and uh, didn't look like this. And I'm like, okay, well, can you point me to that scripture? Can you show me where it says that in the scripture? And they can't do it. Same thing. Don't let somebody come be telling you, oh, God says this, God said that, and they can't point you to the scripture. Moving on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's more. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's more because here's the big one, right? A lot of Israelites, well, the, 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 at least the ones that we're dealing with, mind you, will tell me, they'll point to, oh, Ezra. Ezra had them, Ezra, the, God told them in Ezra to put away their, their strange wives. Oh, I put away their wives, right? And th th that's what we should do. Context. Let's go find that, that context, that elusive, that elusive context that's like so hard for some people, it seems. All right. Ezra chapter nine. All right. And we're just going to read a couple of verses here because that's all it's going to take. Now, when these things were done, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel, and the priests, and the Levites, have not separated themselves from the people of the lands. People of the lands. Uh-huh. Mm, context. Doing, doing according to their abominations. And here we go with the names. Even of the Canaanites. Sound familiar? The Hittites. Sound familiar? The Perizzites. Sound familiar? The Jebusites. Sound familiar? Anyone. Anyone. Anyone? The Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites, right? Now here we have they th they these guys have thrown in the Moabites and the Egyptians, right? But are you telling me that this this is not <laughs> context? That this is not context, my people. Context, my brothers. <sighs> for they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers hath been chief in this trespass. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle, and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard, and sat down astonished. Okay? So we have the nations, right? We have the names of the nations, right? Just out of curiosity, because remember, Go Black to Africa was talking about Caucasian. I don't see any Caucasus, anyone from the Caucasus. Other than you, if you want to say the Hittites, right by Anatolia, Anatolia, perhaps, perhaps, but I don't see any. Uh, I don't see Polynesians, Polynesians, right? And I'm half joking with that. You know, you guys know I'm half joking with Polynesians and all that. You know, I'm you know I'm partially joking. If there are any Polynesians wa watching, any Polynesian people watching, hey, you, I'm I'm just joking. I know that the Bible is, doesn't say Polynesians. Okay, I'm joking. Um, but, all right, let's get back to this context. All right, let's go to the next chapter because the Israelites will say, well, see, see, some of Israelites, oh, they, 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 it was completely just because they married foreign wives and they shouldn't have been married to any foreign wives whatsoever and they need to put them all away. When right here we see, again, the context, the priests, right, they committed trespass by not separating themselves from what? The people of the lands. What lands? The lands that they were supposed to inherit. What lands that they were supposed to inherit? The land of milk and honey that... The Most High brought them into in the first place where he said, dispossess these people, you possess this land. The what people more farther off, the people uh, uh, here or there, way outside of the borders that, that you don't have to deal with, that I'm, I'm not giving you. Yeah, you can marry them. You can marry them. Here we have the problem with them mingling with the people of the people of the land that were supposed to be destroyed. Moving to the next chapter. All right, chapter 10, uh, verse 2. Uh, uh, now Ezra has prayed for the you know the the confessing oh we married strange women blah, 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 okay uh, and Shechaniah the son of Jahil one of the sons of Elam answered and said unto Ezra we have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives and that's it that's all he said no of course not that's not what all he said and have taken strange wives of the people of the land what land. The land of Canaan, the land where Yahweh said, do not marry these people. I'm casting these people, these specific people out. That land. He could have just said, we have taken strange wives. That's what you'll hear a lot of them say. Oh, we they took strange wives. And that's why they leave out that context, that beautiful context. Strange wives of the people of the land, that context. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Okay? Now therefore, this is the part where they, that, you, that they like to read. Now therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives. Right? That's what, they, that's what you hear. You don't hear the context. To put away all the wives and such as are born of them according to the counsel of my Lord and those that tremble at the commandment of our God. And let it be done according to the law. 
few points of context once again because the context guys open your eyes for context open your eyes for context and you'll see it's amazing what you'll start to see now therefore here now therefore let us make a covenant with our god to put away all the wives did the most high tell them to do this now i know that i can already hear well well they shouldn't have been married to him anyway so they well, why would the most high need to tell them that because hey they should they shouldn't have been married to these wives so it, it was automatic that they should have put them away okay again forgetting certain context and precedent does does the torah say or does it not say hey don't marry a don't take a woman and her sister right as to be wives don't marry a woman and her sister do not do it okay it's it's don't do it yet we see that jacob married uh leah and rachel did god for have him oh, apologies just hit the mic did god have jacob put away uh, uh rachel or put away leah or because he had already humbled both of them right already humbled Leah and such did god let leave it be was it god's will no but because they he they had already humbled them did he leave it be you tell me now am i saying that oh well they should have married these foreign wives no because next thing you know, that's what that's what people will be saying. Oh, the Israelite in America said that they should they should have been married these married to these um these 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 wives of the people of the land that they weren't supposed to marry. I'm not saying that. That is not what I'm saying at all. They should not have been. But um now having been in captivity, right? Having been in Babylon, Assyria, uh, and whithersoever else they had been scattered by their enemies, like at this particular point, having mingled and and started to do wrong. And marry these women, right? The covenant had already been made. They had already humbled these women. God didn't say, put them away. Now, I'm not saying that if they had, hadn't inquired of the Lord, that he would or would not have said, put them away, right? It doesn't say. We're not told. But when people tell you God told them, right? That's not true. They, Ezra and them, decided to make a covenant to put away the wives, right? Context. I don't know how many times I'm saying that in this video. Um, okay, let's read. The, we're still reading for some more context here. All the wives and such as are born of them, according to the counsel of my Lord, and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God. Get this now. And let it be done according to the law. What law? The law of Nebuchadnezzar. The law of Darius. The law of tiglath Pileser. No. Let it be done according to the law, the Torah, that thing we've, we've been reading uh, from throughout this presentation that, that dispelled the lies and such that, that uh, some people, some Israelites, some Pan-Africans, some Hamites, because it's not all Israelites, mind you, some of, sometimes it's Hamites, um, will try to come at you with. The law, which as we've just gone over, has context and t context in commandments i'm that's a good that's a good title for a segment context in commandments it has context in commandments when dealing with what interracial marriage what interracial marriage what interracial marriage mm -mm 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 -mm. all right we're almost done here we're going to close um shortly but for all of my Pan-Africans still watching, right? For all of my, the people that are still watching that are like, well, no, you still, I'm not going to count it. There's no way a, a, a mixed kid, the kid that's half black and half white, or a kid that's half black and half Asian, there's no way that, you know, they, they can, they can uh, 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 be part or they can understand or, or blah, 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 because you'd be surprised. That's Go Black to Africa was getting at that. Um, I didn't address the whole thing, that whole part in his video, because mine was getting kind of long, but Go Black to Africa was, he didn't look favorably upon the mixed um, children, specifically. Y'all know who that is? Y'all know who this is? Someone, some, you, you guys know who this is, right? Right? Sure. The, the late, great Bob Marley. Y'all know who this is. Great locks. Amazing locks. Bob Marley was a Pan-Africanist. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Bob Marley was a Pan-Africanist and believed in the unity of African people worldwide. Oh, hmm. Wow. His beliefs were rooted in his Rastafari religious beliefs. Now, of course, we are not Rastafarians. 
He was substantially inspired by Marcus Garvey and had an anti-imperialist and pan-Africanist and had anti-imperialist and pan-Africanist themes in many of his songs, such as Zimbabwe, Ex Exodus, Survival, Black Man Redemption, and Redemption Song. Redemption Strong, Redemption Song, amazing, amazing song, by the way, draws influence from a speech given by Marcus Garvey in Nova Scotia, or Nova Scotia, excuse me. Uh, Marley had held that independence of African countries from European domination was a victory for all those in the African diaspora. In the song Africa Unite, he sings of a desire for all peoples of the African diaspora to come together and fight against Babylon. Similarly, in the song Zimbabwe, he marks uh, the liberation of the whole continent of Africa and evokes calls for unity between all Africans, both within and outside Africa. And this is Bob Marley's father. This is Bob Marley's father. I know a bunch of Israelites, a bunch of Israelites talk about, oh, Bob Marley this, oh, Ziggy Marley that, oh, Bob Marley, he's talking about this and this and that, and this is the man's dad. Hmm? That look like an Israelite to you? That look like a black Israelite to you? Does that even look like a Hamite to you? Because a bunch of you guys will be, oh, Bob Marley all day long. Bob Marley, he fought for our people. He sang for our people, right? He, 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 he spoke on behalf of our people. Bob Marley knew it was up. Bob Marley was advocating for, for advocating for Africans uniting and all this stuff. And this was Bob Marley's dad. This was the man's father. Bob Marley was half white. Bob Marley was half Caucasian. Are you guys going to disown him? Are you people that, that were in my last video telling me how, oh, it, 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 it can't happen. Oh, it's too, it's too much of a, of a mess. It's too much of a, of a problem. Mixed children. Is Go Black to Africa gonna, gonna disown Bob Marley? Is Go Black to Africa gonna say that Mar Bob Marley couldn't understand his struggle? That Bob Marley couldn't understand the black struggle? That Bob Marley couldn't understand uh, uh, his heritage properly or reconcile his heritage properly because he was half white. He couldn't identify with his black side, with his Israelite side. Are you guys going to say that? Right? Go Black to Africa is going to say that? Are you guys going to dis disown Bob Marley? Because you have to. Those you people that were saying up in my other, other video in my comments and whatnot, spewing, telling me that God said this and he didn't, telling me that the Bible said this and it didn't, telling me that uh, interracial couples this and, 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 and uh, mixed kids that, Y'all, y'all better get rid of your Bob Marley records. Throw them out the window. Y'all better stop listening to Bob Marley. Y'all better, the stuff that Bob Marley said, right? Bob Marley, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Bob Marley didn't know what he was talking about because he was half white. Bruh. Do not tell me that the Bible says something and it doesn't say that. And anyone else, people on the fence, to you, to if there's any light skinned, uh, light skinned Israelite listen, ugh, blah, can't talk, light skinned Israelites listening to me, or or um, half white Israelites listening to me, or half Mexican Israelites, or half Asian Israelites listening to me, right? And you guys can't reconcile, feel like you can't reconcile your identity, and but you want to, or you feel like you you you're you're, you're trying to to um uh be accepted into the the black community or the the pro black community or whatever you want to call it the Israelite community but you feel like you're being shut out keep your chin up and cut off toxic people from you because sometimes we have to cut off some of the skin some of the skin folk right sometimes some of the skin folk are just as toxic if not more toxic than our enemies and those who fight against us remember there were traitors in Israel man remember there were traitors in Israel jo D uh, David's sons tried to kill him all right so you 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 if there are some light light skinned Israelites listening to me, mixed Israelites listening to me, half white Israelites listening to me, Israelites that are married to Caucasians listening to me, right? Cut off that negativity. Stand proud, stand tall, because th these people that come and tell you that God said this and God said that have no idea what they're talking about. Because if they did, they wouldn't be telling you that God said this and God said that and the Bible said this and the Bible said that, because they would they would know. They have no idea what they're talking about. With that, please like, share, comment, subscribe, right? Subscribe to the channel. You can, uh, if you enjoyed this, please donate. I have a cash app below. It helps me keep, uh, uh, keep this content coming and, and fuels my research efforts.
All right, until next time, this has been The Israelite in America. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.